Um, so I am John. I am one of the co-founders of Technical Machine. Um, we just moved out to beautiful Berkeley from cold Boston. <laughs> um, uh, the product that we've started making is called Tessel. Uh, it's a Wi-Fi enabled microcontroller that runs JavaScript and it's also compatible with Node. Um, but before I get into exactly what Tessel is and how it works, I want to tell you a little bit about why we started building it. This is a picture of my co-founder, Jalia, with a project uh, we were working on uh, last year of college. Um, a social network had asked us to um, figure out how to get more developers building um, devices connected to the internet, not just phones and computers, but other types of things. Um, and so we, we originally were web developers, and we'd used Node.js and JavaScript and the, the usual uh, web stack quite often. So going into hardware prototyping was totally new for us. Um, and what you can see on Jolly's wrist is basically an Arduino plus a Wi-Fi shield plus a little uh, NRF radio frequency emitter plus an accelerometer. And what it would do is when you shook hands with someone else, it would detect a handshake and then swap IDs and then send that up to a server and passively record all the people that you met. Um, so those are the types of things we were making but we just felt like hardware prototyping was way harder than it should have been um, and not as easy or as flexible, as intuitive as web development. So we decided that what we should do is rebuild hardware prototyping um, but with the web in mind because none of the things we wanted to build um, were didn't use the web, so we, we needed to build around it. Um, the, the other reason we started building it is because uh, we saw that a lot of people were interested um, partially because it's really fun to build these sort of things, but also, also because there's a huge need in enterprise. People estimate billions and billions of these sort of Internet of Things devices being made, but there just literally isn't a large enough talent pool of people who know how to build embedded devices to make that many devices. So we thought um, it could help alleviate the problem if we uh, brought in higher level languages uh, and more intuitive prototyping uh, to the space. So uh, after we graduated in May of last year, we started working through um, a couple of harder revisions. Uh, first, we defined the specs. You know, we wanted JavaScript so it's accessible. We wanted Node.js um, because it's event-driven, which is really useful on hardware, and because it has an amazing package manager. Uh, and we want Wi-Fi built in. Those were the, those were the main constraints, um, and then the hardware was built around that. Uh, and after three months. Uh, we decided to crowdfund it, and it went really well, and we've been just building out all the features that we've promised since then, and we'll be shipping in about two or three weeks now. Just terrifying. Here's just some uh, example code of how you would use Tessel. You'll see that it looks really familiar if you've used Node before. You import Tessel, you import the servo library, and then you connect it to one of the ports, and then you could just use you know, set interval to move the servo from uh, move the servo motor from one end to the other every 500 milliseconds. And the way we implemented it is um, we actually transcompile all the JavaScript to Lua. And Lua was built to be small and embeddable um, and it's relatively fast and it's interpreted. Um, and the reason we like it is because it's really easy to take JavaScript and convert it to Lua. Um, and perhaps in the future it'll be easy to take other languages and convert it to Lua as well. Um, and a guy named Mike, Mike Paul also wrote something called Lua JIT, which is a really finely tuned um, JIT engine, which is really, really fast. Um, so Lua's a lot smaller um, than the alternative, which is V8, but it's also a little bit slower. V8 is the JavaScript runtime that runs in Chrome, um, but it's about 10 megabytes as opposed to 30 kilobytes. So when you're working with small devices, we, we decided that something like Lua is more like what we want. So now I'll, I'll give you a really quick demo uh, of it working. First, I'm going to show you the uh, accelerometer. Uh, you can't see me, but I'm going to plug this little module into one of the ports on my Tessel. Uh, and you can see that at the top it says Excel MMA84. And that's actually the node package name. So if I go to my terminal, all I have to do is npm install. Excel MMA 8.4, and it's going to pull that down from NPM. And then if I open this in whatever text editor I want, I've got my node modules folder. There's my accelerometer. And in the examples, 
Uh, we've got a couple examples here. Here's the most basic one. Like you saw in Servo, you require TESOL, then you require the library for the accelerometer and connect it to a port, and then it's totally event-driven. So when the accelerometer is ready, um, that means that the TESOL has connected to it and confirmed that it can communicate with it. The accelerometer will start spitting out data every so often, and when we get it, we could just print it out. So to run this, just do TESOL push, uh, node modules, accelerometer, examples, accelerometer.js. Should connect over USB. Um, oh, sorry, uh, wrong syntax there. I accidentally uh, sent it to the flash instead of the, the RAM, so it wasn't spewing at the data. Um, but if I do it again, There it goes. So it starts spewing out the data, and I could shake it, and you could see it right away. Um, so it should be nothing new here. It seems exactly like Node. Um, and we wanted Wi-Fi to be um, similar as well. So if you do Tesla Wi-Fi, and then pass in the name of the, the network and the password, and now you all know my uh, phone's hotspot password, uh, you can tell it to connect. It's going to disconnect from its current network if it's on one, um, and then try to connect to the new one. So that's a lot easier than, uh, you know, and there it goes, it connected. That's a lot easier than soldering on wires, figuring out where it goes, rewriting the whole HET spec. Um, and then to use it, it's actually the same thing as you would do in Node. So you do var HTTP, it's require HTTP, and then you could do, you know, an HTTP.get on HTTP, colon slash slash google.com, get the result and then print the status code or whatever you want to do. I'll put it here. Oops. So you could run it in Node. There's the status code. Or you can run it on Tessel. And obviously it's going to be a little bit slower on Tessel, um, but eventually it should send the request out get the response back and print out the status code. And so that's, that's the basics of, of how Tesla's working. And we're just finishing up uh, a lot of the firmware now. Most of the work res resolves around uh, fixing a lot of HTTP bugs because the, uh, the driver is not the most well supported by the manufacturer. Um, but it should be ready in a few weeks um, until we, we uh, send it out. And there you go. There's their, or the status code. So that is uh, my lightning talk. I hope that wasn't too long. Um, if you have any questions or want to look at more of the modules we have, you can go to tesla.io and you